One thing we tend to not do a lot of is projects. We don't take on something that's going to take us several weeks or months to do. We only make videos that will take about three to five days from start to end. It's very rarely that we take on a large project that takes several weeks to do, but when we do, it's usually not super long. So when we built this computer right here, I had no idea what I was getting myself into. I had the idea of building a Hackintosh for the last five years. Um, I always thought it was super cool that I could build a six core machine back before Apple even had a six core laptop and um, desktop that was relatively affordable. And I've always been playing with the idea of making one, but I never got around to it because I felt like my skills on computers were not that good. Now, I finally made the decision to do it uh, about May of 2018. So I spent about a month um, researching parts, finding compatibility issues, and picking out the exact pieces that would make sure that this computer works and could possibly replace my 2013 Mac Pro. So it took about a month finding the right motherboard, the CPU, getting in touch with Intel and having them send us out some parts. And um, we got all of this. So build started on June 14th and it was actually really quick and easy. It only took a couple hours from pieces to operating system fully installed. So great, video's over, right? Hackintosh all set up less than two hours. Good, right? No. Operating system that took two hours to install was Windows. So I got it working with Windows installed and then it was time to get working on Mac OS. That is where we ran into our issues. I built a computer before and I know how to do this. So build went good and there was no issues during the build and Windows installed mostly with no problems. But when it came time to install Mac OS, I couldn't do it. I couldn't figure it out. And I worked for nearly a month trying to figure out what the problem was. And no thanks to Tony Mac X86 forums because they banned me for distributing pirated software. I don't know, but they banned me. So I had to figure this out on my own. So it took a month, but I finally figured out there is one fix in the plist file called fix headers and yeah, I had to set that to true. That was all I needed in order to get this to install Mac OS before it said BSD process error thread unknown during boot up in verbose mode during the install. And I couldn't get into the installer cause it wouldn't let me and it wouldn't work. So finally, after a month of working, this is early July now, I got Mac OS installed on here. The original build and configuration I had was a Gigabyte motherboard, same one I have now, the i7-8700K, a stock Intel cooler, and a GTX 1050. So now Mac OS is installed, all good. Let's upgrade some parts. First thing I did was I got a liquid cooler. This is the Cooler Master, um, Master Liquid 240. It is RGB, of course. And I also upgraded RAM. So I removed my eight gig stick and I put in 16s from Ballistics. And then graphics card, I kind of wanted to use this as my main machine to pump three monitors at once. So two gigabyte GTX 1050 was not enough. So because Apple only uses AMD graphics cards and their native support, so I figured why not get an AMD RX 580. So liquid cooler installed, no problems. RAM installed, no problems. Here's the issue though. I installed the graphics card, went into Windows to install the drivers to make sure it was working first, and it doesn't work. I tried to install the drivers, and during the display driver installation, the computer would crash, and it would say thread stuck in device driver. It would give me the blue screen of death. Nothing would happen, and the computer would not turn on again. So this happened for about two weeks trying to figure out how to do it. I literally tried everything. I even contacted AMD and they really did say, I don't know, in the most professional way possible. Just return your card and get a new one. So they had no idea what was wrong with my RX 580. Nobody knew, I could not get it fixed. So I finally gave up on the idea of using an AMD card that was natively supported in Mac OS. Before I did install the drivers, I did go into Mac OS on the um, computer and see if it would actually do anything. And 
Uh, making sure that the NVIDIA web drivers were disabled, which I installed with the 1050 that I have. Um, it booted into Mac OS, fine, no problems, every graphic looked good. But about five seconds into the login on the computer, everything would freeze, nothing would happen, and I could not get it to do anything. So no drivers, no fixes at all. It should still work, but it didn't. Everything was frozen, even on the Mac OS side. And I could not get the drivers installed for the life of me on Windows. So out with the RX 580, and I finally settled on a six gigabyte GTX 1060. It's just a minor step up from my 1050, but it's six gigabytes compared to two, and it does run all the video games that I use um, at 60 frames per second, because that's my monitor's refresh rate. It could go higher, probably, but that's my monitor that I have. So finally, after one and a half months from build to final completion, it's finally done. A lot of this computer has evolved. A lot of things have changed. And finally, we now have a working computer. All that up to now. So now let's talk about the computer itself. So this is the Corsair Crystal Series 460X with three RGB fans in the front. They don't integrate with any software. There's buttons on the top right here, which you have to press to control it, which isn't that great. But for the motherboard, we have the Gigabyte RS Gaming 5 Z370 chipset because this is the eighth generation processor. Speaking of that, we have the i7-8700K, again cooled by a Cooler Master 240 RGB liquid cooler. It's a pretty good one, I like it a lot. And this also does come with two RGB fans, of course. We've got 16 gigabytes of ballistics RAM DDR4 at 2,666 megahertz. Um, we got a 500 gigabyte Intel M.2 SSD, that is for the Mac OS side. And then I've got two 120 gigabyte SanDisk SSDs, the regular 2.5 inch ones. Those are in RAID 0 for 240 gigabytes for Windows. And then I got a six gigabyte, um, gigabyte, <laughs> get that, um, GTX 1060. So that is the build. How does it perform on Mac OS side? Pretty good. Um, I was able to get about the same, if not a little bit faster speeds for exports than my 2013 Mac Pro. This is a six core processor, uh, 4.3 gigahertz when it's boosted up. Um, that's where it stays real, a lot of the time because it does not thermal throttle because it doesn't get that hot, which is nice. Um, it's slightly faster than my six core Mac Pro, and this is also six cores. So it's not beating it much, but um, it's a good option. It's much, much cheaper. This cost me around $1,000 to build, so pretty good deal. And as for services, I was really surprised. Um, I use Clover Configurator to put a serial number on this computer, um, and everything works. App Store, FaceTime, iMessage, out of the box, no issues. My only problems that I have are sleep awake and shut down. I was really hoping that with my um, AMD graphics card, all that would be fixed. Um, but that never worked out. I did do a couple tweaks and this does shut down now, except the um, RGB lights on the motherboard don't turn off. The fans are off, the computer's off, the CPU cooler's off, the graphic card's off, but the lights on the motherboard are still on. So I got to flip the switch. I don't know. Before it did shut down, but then turn back on. Now it actually stays off. As for sleep wake, when you put it to sleep, it just reboots and goes right back into Mac OS. So I'm still trying to fix that. Um, but all of the major system services that matter um, are working. This does have Wi-Fi built into the motherboard, but it is not working on Mac OS. So I have to go over ethernet, but if I'm going to be using it for more important things, I will put a Wi-Fi card in there because those do work. Just recently, I ran into issues with Adobe software. So inside of Premiere Pro and Media Encoder, anytime I open up a project or start a export, it immediately crashes. So right now only Final Cut Pro is working for me. So I don't know why it's crashing, but I'll try to fix that as well. So overall, this is a decent computer. It, my experience was not great, but yours may um, be different based on the version you're trying to install and your hardware. I did have a ton of problems. This is the most problems I've ever had with building a computer. Even installing Windows was really hard for some reason. Um, it's just a very difficult process that I did not enjoy and I do not want to do ever again. So with this, I built a really awesome Windows computer. It does a great job at Windows stuff. Mac OS, I'm not totally convinced that I'm going to use it for Mac OS purposes, but it's a good computer. But I think I'm going to buy them from Apple for now on. 
So there you go, a very long and hopefully helpful video. If you have any questions about my process, if you run into issues that I had before, um, let me know, I'll try to help you. I'll do the best that I can. Again, I'm no expert, but I feel like I do know some stuff. If this video helped you, or if you just liked my bad experience laughing at me, um, leave this video a like, and hit the subscribe button for more videos on this computer. I love it, and if you wanna see more benchmarks or stuff like that, let me know and we can do something like that for you. But that's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. As always, thank you for your support through this two month process. Um, it was fun building it, not so much fixing it, but you know. Thank you for watching. This is Mark and I'll see you in the next one.